Hey guys, so today we're gonna make this beer sign. This is gonna be a new spin on the old school neon signs. Check it out. This was a gift from my father for Christmas. We've had a few great moments together with Bud Light in hand, so I thought this would be a great tribute to some good times. To get this thing started, I took some quarter inch plywood and applied the logo with some spray adhesive. Then I taped all the edges together to make one big piece and took it over to the bandsaw. Next I took an aluminum sheet, marked it to length, and then cut it to size. I cut two of these to the exact same size as the plywood I cut previously. Now that that's done, I go ahead and remove the tape on the outside holding the pieces of plywood together, I insert my aluminum, and tape the whole thing back up and go again to cut the top and bottom of the logo. So these two pieces of aluminum are going to end up being slightly different sizes. On the first pass, I'm going to cut to the outside of the line. Then I'll remove one of the sheets of aluminum and go to the inside of the black line. This will give me that nice crisp border on the outside of the logo. After running the top edge to the bandsaw, I use a sander and a straight edge to make sure that the top edge was perfectly flat and straight. Leaving it in the sandwich configuration while I did this ensured not only that I could sneak up on it and not take off too much material, but also kept me from bending the aluminum had I tried to just run this through the belt sander or something like that. Once I was satisfied with that, I went ahead and repeated the same process on the bottom. And then it was time to finish up with the corners. I used the bandsaw and then smoothed everything out with the belt sander. Once I had the outside shape exactly how I wanted it, I opened it up, removed a sheet of aluminum, and continued with the exact same procedure for what would be the front of the sign. Once I got the corners rounded, I went ahead and drilled a hole in each of the letters so I could put the scroll saw up through each of them. So I recently picked up some new scroll saw blades from the Flying Dutchman. These things are awesome. Now they make a metal scroll saw blade specifically for cutting metal, but I found their ultimate reverse tooth number five blade worked really well in this application. So I'll leave a link in the description below along with the rest of the tools I use in all my videos where you can pick up some of this stuff for yourself. So this is a very beginner tip for scroll sawing, something I learned when I first started, but it's really important that if you start to get off a line, Make sure you don't try and jump back immediately. That's going to be extremely obvious. Take your time and work your way back to the line slowly, ramp back toward it, and nobody will be the wiser. This will end up saving you a lot of work and your projects will look better in the end. After I finished on my scroll saw, I took this over to my vise and used a file to clean up all the edges. This allowed uh, no sharp edges to be left and also to clean up any imperfections that I might have made during my cutting. So if you're wondering where that back piece of aluminum went, here it is. I'm using it to trace out the plexiglass that'll go on the front of the case, just behind the letters that I was just cutting out. This gives me a nice firm place to mount all that stuff and create a nice box structure that should be nice and strong. Now this is quarter inch thick, an eighth inch or something else will work just fine. I then just took this thing to the bandsaw and cut it to shape. Once that was done, I took the back piece of aluminum and the front piece of plexiglass and taped and clamped those together. I then used my random orbital sander to knock down the highs and low spots. Uh, about halfway through this I realized that there was probably a better way to do this so I went ahead and made my own sanding board with a nice firm piece of scrap melamine that I glued a piece of sandpaper to. This allowed me to take the highs and lows over a larger area and flatten everything out nice and smooth throughout the whole thing and make it really uniform. Now at the front and back were taking shape it was time to move on to the sides. This piece of aluminum is a standard 8th inch that you can buy in your big box store. It's an 8th inch by 1 inch. So all I did was mark the corners, take it to a pipe, and bend it around the pipe with the corresponding radius. This got me exactly where I wanted to be and I could make little changes. If the bend wasn't exactly where I wanted it, I just took it back to the pipe and made a couple adjustments and I was good to go. Next I did the exact same thing with 3 quarter inch aluminum just offsetting to the inside of the one inch that I had just created. This allowed me to create a lip for the plexiglass to sit on and made everything nice and flush on the outside as well as the back of the sign. So because of the restrictions of the material that I had to purchase at the big box store, this actually ended up being just a little short. It was just over eight feet, which was readily available to me. I ended up putting this on the bottom so it wouldn't be in plain sight and uh, ended up not being a big deal after all. Once the letters were cut out, I went back with some acetone and cleaned off any residue from the tape. 
This made sure that I wasn't gumming up my sandpaper nor contaminating the rest of the sheet. So I just used the sandpaper to remove all the scratches on the surface. Once I had these two pieces to the exact same size, I went ahead and separated them, and then I removed the film from the plexiglass. I don't know why, but it's so satisfying peeling that protective film off. Then it was time to place on the outer piece of aluminum. Make sure I got the placement just right, and when I had it exactly where I wanted it, I went ahead and made a hinge using several pieces of scotch tape. I got this idea from those protective screens that you put on the outside of your cell phone when you're trying to get the placement just perfectly. This is just a slightly larger application, but it worked great. To put these two pieces together, I just used some 5-minute epoxy. I used acetone to prep the surface and clean off any residue from anything. I'm going to be using some cheap brushes to apply the 5-minute epoxy, and I don't want the bristles coming out in the epoxy. So something you can do is just use some masking tape to remove any loose bristles. Then when I apply the epoxy, I don't have to worry about picking out the pieces of the brush. And instead of worrying about throwing away a nice brush, I can just use these cheap brushes and throw them away when I'm finished. So this is just a standard two-part, five-minute epoxy. Now you don't want to take too much time dilly-dallying here, because you got to get this stuff put together and put onto whatever two surfaces you're bonding together. I just wanted to be careful not to get too much in any one spot, so I used the larger chip brushes in the larger areas, and then I went back with the acid brushes in the thinner spots to make sure I didn't have any squeeze out. So then I hinged the outer piece back into place, everything lined up perfectly. The cool thing about bonding this to plexiglass is I could turn it over and look at the back side to make sure I was getting good coverage everywhere. And I was, so I set it back down and started on the inside of both the B and the D. Now I saved the cutouts from previously so that I would be able to place the inside of the letters exactly where they needed to go in reference to the rest of the logo. Once I had everything bonded in place, I went ahead and sat an extra sheet of plywood across it and added a bunch of extra weight to make sure that everything got pressed down nice and firmly and I didn't have any gaps between the two pieces. So next it was time to bond the two outer pieces together. Once the epoxy was applied, I went around and used clamps all the way around it to hold everything nice and tight. It took me a little longer than it should have to figure out exactly how I was going to run the LEDs. I wanted even lighting, so I had to make sure that was good. So in order to do that, I had to figure out how to run wire traces between them. Now, I'm sure I overanalyzed this thing, but I wanted to try and come up with the least number of connections to save on time soldering. I know that my soldering skills aren't the best, so I wanted to minimize any chance of having issues, and that would probably be found where I made the connections. Then I removed the protective film and started placing the LEDs. Normally I find that the adhesive on the back of the LED strip itself doesn't hold very well to whatever surface I'm putting it on. But in this case, I think because the plexiglass was so smooth that it bonded super well. I didn't have to put anything extra on here and I didn't have a single edge come up throughout the entire build. So there's nothing magical about working with these LEDs, but one thing that you do want to be sure of is that if you're going to make non-continuous runs, make sure that you cut only on the indicated places to cut. So now it was time to solder all the connections together. So I got out my soldering iron, some wire, and a hot glue gun. So I put a bead of solder on each of the connection points. The idea here being that I would just take the open-ended wire connections and heat up the solder around it and the solder would hold the wire in place, at least temporarily. So traditionally the black is the negative and red is the positive. This helps make sure everything's connected properly and will help with troubleshooting if you have any trouble down the line. So once I got everything soldered in place and tested the circuit to this point, I went ahead and applied some hot glue. This allowed for strain relief but also it made sure I didn't accidentally short something. So here's another example of how this 3D printer has just been worth its weight in gold. I'm using this a lot for templates and stuff, so I designed the exact pattern I wanted in Fusion 360, then took it into Cura and did the slicing and sent it to my 3D printer. So I tried to keep this pretty simple. I just filled each cap as full as I could with hot glue. Then before the glue had time to set up, I flipped it over and placed it in its hole. So as far as I can tell, the glue moved to the bottom and any excess air moved to the top. The whole thing made a perfect bond. Another thing you want to be aware of is this stuff gets pretty hot pretty quickly, so I ended up using a leather glove on one hand. So when I filled the jig with caps, I simply picked it up and moved it to a new location. So I would try to make it to the place that had been cooling the longest. That way I didn't accidentally disturb the caps that were still drying. 
So you notice I didn't mount caps on the entire back. I left spots blank where you couldn't see behind there and this will give me a place to mount this thing later. Next I had to figure out some way to attach the sides and the back. So I took a little piece of angle and cut some tabs. Once I had them cut, I went ahead and took them to the belt sander and cleaned up the edges. So I found that when you have tiny pieces like this, the best thing to do is to keep your fingers away as far as possible. So on the back side of the plexiglass and the outside of the logo, I scuffed it with sandpaper. Now this is going to do two things for me. One, it's going to diffuse the light, which will make it look like an old school neon sign. And secondly, it's going to hide the tabs that I just cut out for mounting on the sides. Like I mentioned earlier, the piece that I got to wrap around the outside edge was a little bit small. After they were marked, I went ahead and took them to the bandsaw and then cleaned everything up on the belt sander. Next, I just glued and clamped these into place and it was ready to go. The next thing I needed to do was to go ahead and mark where the tabs went. Using a center punch, I marked where I would drill a hole to get the electrical cord out the bottom of the sign. So I started with the smaller drill bit and worked my way up gradually. So the largest drill bit I had on hand wasn't quite big enough. So I took my drill, mounted in a rat tail file, and went to town hogging this thing out. Once the hole was large enough, I went ahead and passed the electrical cord through and added some more strain relief to make sure that any weight put on this thing by the hanging cord wouldn't be any stress on the electrical system itself. Now that everything was nice and sealed up, the next thing to do was to mount the tabs. So in this case, I just put CA glue on the one side and then sprayed the activator on the tab. I then stuck the two together, held it for a couple seconds, and it's not going anywhere. At this point, I'm getting really excited because this thing's starting to take shape and it is looking awesome. So when I bonded the two outside pieces together, I made a small offset in the back. This allows the back piece to sit completely flush. With the weight of the caps pulling on the back sheet, it wants to flex a little bit, so I'm using some scotch tape here to go around the outside and get everything locked into place before I mount it to the tabs. So do you remember earlier when I marked the outside location for the tabs? Well this came in really handy because at this point I could see exactly where the tabs were on the underneath side and go ahead and drill my hole. Once I had the location where the hardware needed to be installed on the back, all I needed now to do was just drill a hole. But before I did that, I wanted to make sure that none of the shavings from the drill came out inside the sign. So I made a little shelf out of masking tape. It just so happened that the picture hardware I had in hand worked perfectly with the rivets that I was using to mount the sides to the back panel. So there's a good chance that this thing might end up outside. So I just went ahead and used the short 1 8 inch aluminum rivets. That way nothing's going to rust or corrode later. To button this thing up, I used the same riveting method to attach the tabs to the back panel. This tied everything together really nicely. And to finish this thing up, I just went ahead and twisted some picture hanging wire around the back side and it held perfectly. The last thing to do was to test this thing out. So I strung it up and turned on the lights. Bam! Haha, <laughs> looks awesome. This thing really adds to the atmosphere in the room. It's super cool, it looks great in person, and I'm loving this thing. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you let me know by hitting that like button. If you didn't, feel free to leave me a comment. I'm always looking for ways to improve my projects and my videos, so let me know. And if this is your first time here, make sure you check out one of these other videos that I put out. I've got all sorts of projects on here and it's growing constantly, so check it out guys. Look for me on Instagram, I've been hitting that up about every single day. I got a lot of behind the scenes footage there and also projects that aren't quite big enough to make it to YouTube. So hit me up over there at Small Shopworks. Mash that subscribe button if you like this video and you want more videos like this in the future. I got several projects that are done and waiting to be edited so stick around if you want to know when those are coming out hit that bell and get a notification when those are out. Have fun making and stay safe. Later.